You guys are a little unique in the fact that you're daddy, you're caddy, but you also have your dad that is caddy as well and coach. How do all those, do you guys differ in your opinions and how do you work through it to help Jack? I think we just defer to the guy who's played in major golf championships. Yeah. Uh, kind of makes it pretty easy. Someone who's a golf pro and has been has been a collegiate golf coach, has played in major golf championships, and most importantly, uh, is wiser than either of us are uh, in terms of not only what it takes to be successful in life, but also in golf. Do you see Jack on the PGA Tour with him? I do, I do. A friend of mine, uh, Mike Thomas, is Justin Thomas's father. I was in Lexington as a golf professional when Mike Thomas, Justin's dad, was a pro in Louisville, and we played a lot together. So I remember when Justin was born, and I remember when Justin was like seven or eight years old, and I was playing with Mike in a tournament. He says, buddy, I think my son has it. I really do. He can do things with a wedge that I've never dreamt of doing. And that's the way Jack is now. Jack's just turned nine. He's been doing things with a wedge for three or four years that he creates and he makes up himself. I see him being on the PGA Tour, absolutely. How does it feel to have a granddad as a caddy and coach who has played professional golf? It helps me a lot with uh, uh, training and just having good attitude and the mentality of a PGA Tour player. Tell me about those emotions coming off of winning summer nationals last year. Palmer loves to joke that it was the round, the second round where he shot a 29 and birdied the first six holes and ended up winning by several strokes. Uh, that it was the round as a caddy that she's heard me talk the least. And that's, <laughs> yeah. that's probably true. Uh, one, because it was really hot that day. Two, was because I just didn't want to get in the way. Uh, it was special from the start when he drained like a downhill 25 foot birdie putt. I viewed my job as keeping him cool and keeping him calm and not saying anything to screw up the streak because uh, we've seen him do amazing things, but nothing quite like that. You know, we're so proud of what he accomplished, but I'm even more proud of the time he put in when no one was watching. And I think that's what's going to pay off in the long run of turning him into hopefully a gentleman and a, a kind, uh, kind player from here on out. So I'm, I'm proud of him for what he was doing when no one else was watching. You've been a part of it from day one with, with his golf. How did it feel for him to win Under Armour Summer Nationals last year? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, my, both my wife and I were there and watching it. And we were just kind of, it wasn't that we were shaking our heads because I knew he could do it, but he did it. And he didn't look any different making the first birdie as he did making the sixth birdie in a row. So that's when I knew that he he had something special and that it didn't bother him. He didn't get upset that he was six, seven, eight under par. Tell me what it felt like to win Under Armour Summer Nationals last year. Going into the tournament, I actually had no expectations. I, I, I didn't think I was gonna get top five. I just wanted to have fun. And, and so I broke my scoring record the first day. Then I was like, wow, I actually have a chance to contend in this tournament. And then I broke it again by uh, four sh shots. And then I was like, wow, I just won the tournament by five shots. In this big major tournament for you, you're just going birdie, birdie, birdie. Was there any thought in your mind saying, oh, this is, this is gonna end? Um, not really. I was just out there. I wasn't actually keeping score. Uh, I just kept hitting drives uh, and uh, right. hitting approach shots and making cuts, and I didn't really care about anything at all. Did you know you were pretty much at the top of the leaderboard at all? I mean, yes, I knew, but I didn't really think about it much at all. Can you put into words what you guys were feeling after Jack won Summer Nationals a week later, a month later? I mean, he won by a landslide, his, his ti tiny self, and he comes in and just blows out the competition. I mean, we're so proud um, of, of what he accomplished, the fact, but we knew he could do it. We've seen his game progress over the years. We knew that he had all the pieces there. So it was just fun to watch him put all of the pieces that were, that have been there for a while together in one round. I know as he was going on to that, um, the first tee on the second day, and he was in the lead by a couple of tricks, I think, I was just praying 
would you help him keep it together? Like, I can't imagine the nerves I asked him. He's like, buddy, like, how are you feeling? I'm a little nervous, which I haven't ever heard him say before. I said, yep, that makes sense. You know, this is a big day, but you just go and have fun. And to watch him be able to um, swallow those nerves and perform better than he ever has um, and push through that, I, um, I was just so proud of him. You tell your child and your junior golfer that you love them as much on their best day or their worst day and you love them the exact same amount no matter what. Uh, and you often have to say that on the heartbreaks, whether it's the close losses or the worst rounds ever, you have to say that to them, but then you get to say it to them when they have their best round ever and, and, and when they're on top of the mountain and, and they've just you know won one of the biggest tournaments they've ever played in. You get to say it to them then too, and it means even more to them then. Uh, and if I'm honest, it means more to me, too, when you get to say it to him in that situation, uh, that I'm proud of you, uh, but I love you just as much as I always have and ever will. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you just shot a 29 and won a championship, but because you're my son. Who was the most emotional coming off that win, mom, dad, or granddad? Mom. Definitely. Did she cry? She was on the verge of it. You run off the green, who did you hug first? Uh, I hugged my dad on the green, and then I hugged my mom and then my grandpa. So you mentioned that the highlight of your career was shooting a 71 in, uh, on the Pro Tour. Compare that to seeing your grandson winning Summer National. I think I'm easier on Jack than I am on myself. So I was, I was for me, I was actually more nervous at the Hawaiian Open on the last hole because I really wanted to break par than watching Jack. I trust Jack more than I trust me. I don't get nervous when Jack plays. I also, again, this comes from Dr. Otella. It's a hard game. And so you, he always teaches me to underreact to whatever happens. I pat myself on the back when it comes to being a grandfather or a caddy watching Jack play. I know it's a difficult game. If he hits a bad shot, okay. You just gotta let it go. I think he's learned a lot from me, but I think he's also learned a lot on his own. Tell me about Jack and when he started playing golf. I come from a golfing family. So Jack had his first set of classic clubs when he was 18 months old, maybe earlier. Um, so he's always been around golf. He picked up a golf club, started going to the range when he was like two. Um, but really it was just for fun and um, to get to hang out with my parents and Joseph, but when he turned four, I think is really when we could tell he caught the bug. And he started competing when he was five um, and just hasn't looked back. It was during the pandemic when all the other sports leagues were canceled and uh, the SNEDS tour in Tennessee opened up and Palmer mentioned, well, maybe let's sign him up for one of the first tournaments. And I said, well, maybe he should play a nine hole round and keep score before we put him <laughs> in his first tournament. Yeah. Uh, but Palmer, per usual, was exactly correct. Uh, and he absolutely loved it. It was also the best way for him to understand the game mm -hmm. and how keeping score works was to do it in a low stakes, fun, family friendly tournament environment. And uh, he can't get enough of it ever since. Tell me about the first time you started playing golf. Uh, I was about five years old. I remember it, it was like the happiest time to me because it was my first tournament ever and I didn't know what it was going to be like and I was just out there having fun. When did you realize that Jack had a talent for golf? When he was five, he was homeschooled that year and he would come out and want to come out. He would, he would call me on the phone and say, can I come out to the golf course tomorrow? And all winter long, Regardless of the weather, we would go out and chip and putt and hit balls, and I could tell really early that he had a really, he had a gift uh, for the short game, and then also his golf swings as good as, as, as I've seen. So Jack has pretty much grown up seeing granddaddy playing golf. I've got a good swing. I've worked hard on it over the years, so the first golf swing Jack ever saw was mine, and I believe that's a really, really important thing that they see it being done correctly, and I think that's helped him tremendously, because he was, he couldn't talk. He couldn't speak. I mean, he was like a year and a half old when we first started going out to the golf course. And I'd sit him down and I'd say, just watch me. And that's basically, since we couldn't communicate verbally, I would just swing and he would, he would copy me. What would you say is the strongest part of Jack's game? I 
think Jack's focus, um, we call him an old soul. He's a 70 year old man in a, you know, nine year old's body. Um, so he's just a focused kid. He always has been. And I think that plays to his advantage when he's in kind of a high stakes tournament. Um, he can kind of tune the noise around him out and really focus on the job that needs to be done. He just has fun with it. Like yeah. it's not monotonous practice for him mm -hmm. because he's having fun playing games. You know, there are so, so many times people stop and take photos or videos of him on a range because there'll be 30 people lined up on a range. And this tiny little golfer named Jack is more disciplined in his practice routine than any of them. He became friends with the Vanderbilt golf team, which is some of the best amateur golfers in the world because they saw him on the range uh, and called him over and they asked him to have chipping contests with them because when you see him practicing, you can tell both not only is he disciplined and focused, but he's also having fun with it. Do you enjoy, and what is it like playing with the older kids? You said, mom said that you play with the kids from Vanderbilt. Yeah, it's really fun. And it's kind of just, it's, for me, it's kind of just another day playing golf after the golf course. The way that you guys talk about this, it's almost like he practices by himself. He's not, he doesn't have one of you there all the time with him. He goes um, to where my dad teaches golf. I've played in nine major championships, a PGA championship at Hazel King in 2002. I four spotted in Hawaii one year at the Hawaiian Open. So I was on the PGA Tour, shot 71. So broke par on the PGA Tour. So that was probably my highlight as far as my ego is concerned. And uh, played in two senior British Opens, two senior US Opens, five senior PGA Championships, and probably seven or eight Champions Tour events. And he spends, um, during the summer, all day long, roaming around the practice area. I mean, my dad can see him, thankfully. But he is often by himself in our area. We're developing um, a golf community of kids his age, but really, for a long time, he was one of the only ones. But there were several years where um, it was Jack and uh, you know a lot of nice older gentlemen <laughs> at the course, but he didn't seem to mind. Sometimes when I'm caddying for him and I'll find him in a, he will find himself in a tricky situation under a tree in a rough lie uh, up against the lip of a bunker, and he'll say, "Oh, I I can hit this shot," and you know I feel like I'm Michael Greller talking to Jordan Spieth, and I'm like, "No, you can't." But he goes, no, 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 I've been practicing it in the backyard. Uh, and sure enough, you know, <laughs> yeah. chokes down on the seven iron and punches it right up to 12 feet. And I'm like, where did that come from? He goes, I practiced it for 45 minutes last week by himself in the backyard, under and behind pine trees along our back fence. So how does it feel to see your son to come up with these amazing shots that you never thought possible? It's an absolute blast. And, and he never ceases to amaze me. And I just smile and shake my head and um, say, well, there he goes again. Of, of course, <laughs> he, he, he pulled it off yet again. Rarely does he find himself in a situation on the course in a tournament that doesn't align with some sort of fun game him and his brother are playing in the backyard while they're trying to hit trick shots. Have there been times when you've had to talk him out of a, a club? I've realized over the last couple of years that it's not my job to talk him into clubs or out of clubs. When he's most successful and when I'm his best caddy and his best dad, is more so just by asking him questions and making him talk through and think through things instead of rush into things. We ask him questions so that he hasn't forgotten anything or doesn't leave anything, any stone unturned. And, and so, but again, when he's playing in a tournament, he's the player and he makes the final decision and I allow that. And, and that's how you learn as well. If he made the wrong decision, he learns. Normally he knows what the right answer is and he's more likely to get there on himself if I merely just kind of ask him questions about like, well, you know, tell me why you would hit this club or why you wouldn't hit that club. And he gets there on his own and figures it out as he gets older. We had a tournament last year. He was tied for the lead, coming to the last hole, and he hits it in a fairway bunker. And he gets in the fairway bunker, and I was caddying for him, and I told him, make sure, let, let's do, um, take plenty of club, because I don't want you swinging hard, because if you swing hard in a fairway bunker, you, your feet will slide and you'll mishit it. Well, he hits it to here with the five iron. He hits it and, and makes the putt and wins the tournament. And when we're coming off the green, he says, I remember a year ago, you told me that right before I take it back in a fairway bunker to lift my chin. So he, he remembered that from a year ago. 
I, I tell people, you know, they say, well, you've done a great job with Jack. Said, no, Jack's done it. I just hope I don't mess him up, which is what Jack Grout said about Jack Nicholas. He said, I'm just glad I didn't mess him up. I've seen Jack play for pretty much, I guess, as long as you guys have talked about his, his golf career has been going on. And I always see him very calm. His, his emotions are very just straight, calm, cool, collected. His granddaddy always tells him um, before every tournament, Jack, I want you to have the best attitude on the course today. He doesn't say, Jack, I want you to go out there and win. I want you to go out there and, you know, birdie every hole. He says, Jack, I want you to have the best attitude on the course today. And so it's something that he's worked on for as long as he's been playing. So there's not every day that he's this you know, perfectly chill little guy. But I think it is something that he realizes is really, really important. And I think it's part of why we love that our boys play golf. I think there's not another sport that teaches the sort of um, discipline and self-control and learning how to fail and come, come back stronger from it um, than golf because there is no perfect, right? Every time he hits a birdie, the next hole, he's got to face a new challenge. When Jack won nationals, the next week he went out and shot an awful round. And I was so thankful because I said, gosh, one, it teaches humility. This is a hard game. You have to keep working on it. You have not peaked as a eight-year-old golfer. But two, um, he learned what it looked like to be at the very top and then also be at the very bottom and, and had to come to terms with, do I still love this game? And of course he does, you know, which I think is, is um, such a gift that golf gives. Yeah, I think there's no greater gift that a parent can give than to teach them perseverance and resilience. Golf teaches perseverance and resilience. <sighs> Keeping a good attitude in the midst of hard things. It's like, you know, one of my favorite Bobby Jones quotes of golf is the most like life because you hit good shots and get bad results and hit bad shots and get good results and it can seem unfair in the moment. Um, but that's what helps teach that perseverance and resilience that is key not only to golf, but also life. So you have a different perspective on being coach, caddy, granddaddy. How has that helped your relationship? How has that helped him in golf? I think all three things uh, are pretty much on the same theme in that I'm, I'm a client of Dr. Bob Rotella, the, the famed sports psychologist. And he says, number one, you gotta love it. From the, from the very first, I would try to make it as fun as possible. Kids love to play games, love to have lighthearted competitions, and we would always, sometime during our practice sessions, we would have a, a contest, and he absolutely loved it, and he's gotten to where he beats me most of the time now. It's obvious that Jack is smaller in his age, stature-wise, how does that help him? How does he persevere through that? Yeah, Jack's a peanut. Um, I'm five feet tall. He definitely has my genes and not Joseph's. Uh, but I think, one, it's forced him to be disciplined and to work on swing mechanics. He can't have a wonky swing because his ball's just not physically going to go as far as everyone else. And so he has really spent a lot of time with my father, with his coach, working on his swing. And now he can keep up with the big dogs, right? He's always a head shorter than most of the other top competition. But we've taught him, I've, uh, a saying that I've always told him is dynamite comes in small packages. And I think that's true for Jack. He, um, he's used his size to his advantage and hasn't let it stop him from playing really great golf. You're one of the smallest kids in your age group when you play golf. How do you work through that? I've learned to play my own game and just uh, not really care about what they're doing and just keep playing golf. How does it feel to see that you don't need to be the big, strong bomber to win a national title? It's kind of nice not having to stress about how far you drive it or how tall you are and just be yourself out there. I actually think it's a feature, not a bug. Golf is a mental game and I can't tell you the number of rounds, whether it's he's playing with someone a foot taller or someone two and a half years older, or sometimes both, in which the round will start with Jack a couple strokes behind, and then after a few holes, Jack has tied it up, and then those older players fall apart uh, because they can't believe what, what Jack is doing. The shots he's hitting, the putts he's draining, the chips he's almost pulling out, not only does it help him stay a better player, but it also gives him a mental game 
heads up, even if he's a head shorter than everybody else. You guys specifically separate the family aspect, the granddaddy aspect, versus I'm the caddy. Yeah, I'm the caddy, granddaddy. absolutely. I, I act like a caddy. And he's caddy for me, and he's one of the best caddies I've ever had. What makes him the best caddy? Well, he knows what the player wants, because he knows what he wants. I tell people he's got a golfing IQ of a 30-year-old touring pro, in my opinion. It's, a, it's amazing how he has learned, and a lot of it, well, most of it, I would say, he's learned on his own. He'll get up before school and turn on the 2017 Masters, or he'll go out back and chip on his, his chipping green before school starts. You don't have to tell him to do that. He'll, he'll be in a tournament, the tournament's over, and before we go home, he'll want to go back to the putting green to putt. I've never told him to do that, but that's what he wants to do. What's the strongest part of your game? Short game. So how do you keep your mental state so even keel? When I'm warming up, it's I'm just not thinking about being perfect. I'm just thinking about getting loose, and then on the course, I just try to have the best attitude. And if I get and if I get bogey, double bogey, triple bogey, or whatever it is, you, I'm mad for about 20 seconds, and then I'm and then I'm just walking to the next team. How important is it for Jack to play other sports? To us it's really important, um, especially at a young age. I'm sure there'll be a time where he has to pick, uh, but right now from just a physical standpoint, I think it makes Jack stronger. During baseball season, his drives start going a lot further because he's, um, he's swinging a baseball bat every, every day. So I think it's important. I think also having a team, you know, golf can be a lonely sport. There's a lot of of pressure um, from the mental game standpoint on yourself. So I love that he gets to have his buddies, he gets to play baseball and basketball. Um, golf is definitely his favorite thing to do and the thing that he excels at, but he, I think the other sports, at least for now, are really important to his development, both um, mentally but also physically. Playing on a team, there's just, it teaches you so many things about life and other sports. And I'm, you know, primarily from my father-in-law, uh, who was a professional baseball player before becoming a professional golfer, is, is the lesson that uh, if, if taught correctly and coached correctly, they always complement each other, other sports and golf, rather than kind of taking away from each other. Um, and, and I'm a firm believer in that, and frankly, I think Jack is a prime example of that. Baseball was my first love, and I played in high school and college, wanted to play professionally, but didn't quite work out. But uh, in 1963, my family went on a vacation to Chicago and we went to the Western Open. The first tour event I'd ever seen, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, Gary Player, they were all there. And I put it in the back of my mind, I was 11 years old at the time, that if baseball didn't work out, that I was going to be a golfer. And so baseball didn't work out, so I became a golfer. So you've heard that as a baseball player, you should never pick up a golf club because it's going to mess up your swing or vice versa. You have a different perspective on that. Well, it's a big myth. It's the same pivot. It's just on a different plane. And so that's, that's what, I've, what I teach my students and what, I've, what I teach Jack. And Jack's a good baseball player as well. I'm a level two certified TPI instructor, the Titleist Performance Institute. They want their, their junior players to play other sports, to get their bodies uh, as well-rounded as possible. So do you think he's that perfect example of the balance of baseball, golf, other sports? Yes, absolutely. Um, for one thing, you don't get burned out. That's, that's, that's my number one concern, and I've talked to Dr. Rotella about it, is making sure that a nine-year-old doesn't get burned out by, he loves it so much, I kind of put a, a blanket on him and, and slow him down a little bit. It's time to play baseball. And, and he loves basketball as well. Because again, burnout is real. And who, nobody remembers who won when they were nine years old. They remembered when they were 19, 20, and 25 years old. So that's, I wanna make sure if that's what he wants to do, that we, that we have the foundation built so that uh, he can give that a shot when it's time. You guys play in a lot of junior golf tournaments. Yeah. What makes the Junior Tour powered by Under Armour stand out? I think my favorite thing about the Under Armour Tour is how much it has pushed Jack to be the player he is today. So he started um, playing the tour when he was six years old. So he's in that six to eight division. And he said he's a small guy. So when he was six, 
he was playing against eight year olds, two heads short of him, right? But he had to learn how to play longer distances, how to lose with grace, how to watch those older guys. And as the years progressed, as he became seven, he became the top seven year old in, in nationals. Still, you know, not in the top 10, but okay, he's, he's making progress. And so it was really sweet to get to see it pay off last year. But I love that Under Armour has pushed him to be a better golfer. We're about to see it happen again. You know, he just aged up to be 9 to 11, and it's going to be a slog. Um, it is brand new distances. He's never played anything this long. And I think we're going to see his game accelerate because of that push. The Junior Tour sponsored by Under Armour is an absolute blast. Uh, we say that all the time. The golf tournaments are really well run but also the entire environment around them uh, of how the whole family is celebrated as a family unit um, in support of the junior golfers, but also just because junior golf, like life, should be fun. Um, and it should be something that brings all of us closer together. Uh, it's like that for adults, whether as a golf fan or golfing with your friends or golfing for business, it unites people together. Um, and I think the Junior Tour by Under Armour is a great way of showing kids of how fun the game can be, but also how important the family unit is and then the broader community that it brings together of golfers from not only all across the country, but around the world. You growing up did not have any Junior Tours to be a part of. How important do you feel that the Junior Tour powered by Under Armour is to, have, to help Jack grow his game? Oh, the Under Armour Tour is fantastic. Um, to get, be able to play that much in, in a tour, of, of, of a, a junior tour event that feels like a major championship. Again, I've, I've played in a PGA Championship and Senior Opens, the, the atmosphere of walking in to those Under Armour Junior Tour events, they have the same atmosphere as a, a major championship. So it's just gonna be kind of second nature when he turns 18 or 20 and, and he's playing in on national tournaments because he's playing in national tournaments now with Under Armour. What do you guys want Jack's future in golf to look like? I want him to always love the game of golf. Mm -hmm. And I think if he always loves the game of golf, that gives him a chance at playing at the highest levels uh, if he continues to love it. It's far too frequent that you will see someone whose priority is to see someone succeed at the highest levels of golf. Uh, above loving the game and I think that's a surefire way to ensure that neither of those things happen uh, whereas if you cultivate a love for the game uh, then perhaps it gives an opportunity uh, to continue kind of climbing through the ranks as time goes on. I'm just grateful for the memories that golf has given our family. Memories with my dad, memories with Joseph and his brothers, trips that we get to go on around the world. So I hope that that continues. That for the rest of his life he gets to travel the world and play courses um, in in the most remote places because he loves the game and he, and he wants to explore. So you've got some pretty strong ties to Vanderbilt. Is that where you want to go to college? Definitely. Where would you like to see your future in golf? I want it to be on the PGA Tour and winning uh, tournaments, majors, hopefully. What is it that helps him get to that point where, again, a birdie to him is I think it's just the things that I learned in my own game in the 40 years that I've played and, and then also from Dr. Rotella is that it's a game, treat it like a game. It's not serious. You never get too serious. I want him to practice like it's the most important thing in the world. And again, this comes straight from Dr. Rotella. But when you get on the golf course, he says, man, it's party time. Let's go play the game. A four-year-old knows how to play. As we get older, sometimes we, we, we kind of forget how to play and we get all serious and we scrunch up our face and I gotta make this putt. Instead, just go play the game. Stay in the present. It's this shot right here, right now. Do the best you can. And then go and play the game. Have a light-hearted attitude. Why do you love the Junior Tour Powered by Under Armour? I get to meet new friends coming from uh, some from Florida, some from Georgia, some from California, and some from Indonesia. Uh, just meeting new friends and having a fun time. And, and Coach 
Cliff giving us new nicknames on Tee Box. Playing out of Nashville, Tennessee, rocking the Tiger Friday Red. Give it up for Jack Williams. What's that nickname? Uh, I have a few. Big Jack, Jack Dubs. I'm sure there's gonna be some new ones.